Hello scrappers and welcome back to my channel. I'm, I'm about to vacuum filter this this beaker here full of copper nitrate solution and um, the reason I'm going to use the vacuum on it is because there's a lot of crud in here it's going to clog the filter and this is going to take a long time to filter. This is very dirty stuff. So the vacuum really speeds things along. If I had to rely on gravity filtration this could take days or even longer. You know, this will be done in, you know, not too long. But, uh, you know, one question I get more than anything about my vacuum filtration setup, in fact, more than and just about any other question I get about anything at all, is what kind of pump do I use for my vacuum filtration? And, really, it's not important. You don't have to get the same kind of pump. This is the cheapest pump I could find on eBay when I needed a new pump, because I wore out my old pump because I used it for 10 odd years and it was used when I got it. So, you know, it finally gave up the ghost. But I just bought the cheapest little pump I could find on eBay. And this thing works great. You know, you don't need a big, fancy, expensive pump. You don't need a pump that can move a lot of CFMs. You don't need a pump that can pull a high vacuum. You don't want to do that. You, you don't want to pull a high vacuum on your glassware because that is a lot of atmospheric pressure pushing down in this glass. Basically, it's a bomb. You don't want to do that. You just want to be able to, you know, pull a few inches of mercury or a few, few feet of water, vacuum, just to help the filtration along. So you don't need some big professional fancy pump. Find the cheapest pump you can find. Go to a pawn shop, you know, go wherever. Get a cheap pump. Go on eBay, get a cheap pump. The one expensive accessory that I would recommend you get, though, is this. So we'll talk about that more in a minute. But you don't need a fancy pump. I'll give you a close-up and show you exactly what pump this is in case you want to try and find the exact one. Good luck. Um, I don't know how many of these there are out there, but, you know, just find another cheap pump. So this particular pump I'm using right now is, is a gas pump. And, uh, well, there's the, the model number, if you're interested. So the actual model of pump really isn't all that important. What is important is that you get this particular accessory for the pump. This reservoir that, that you can put on the inlet. So here's the inlet right here, and the suction is coming through here like this into the pump. And this has a valve in it and it also has this floating ball. Now, it will happen eventually. You will let the liquid get up to the side arm of your flask at some point. It will happen. And you will suck liquid back into your pump and destroy your pump. It'll hydro lock it and the liquids we're dealing with with gold recovery are really nasty. They'll destroy the metal. So you need one of these. Uh, basically, if liquid comes in like this, it's going to go down into the reservoir and fill the reservoir. And this little ball will float. And as the reservoir fills up, the ball will come up and it will close off the inlet to the pump. So, yeah, I have had people write to me and tell me that they have done this to their pumps. I'm looking at you, Diane. So this is what you need. These can be a little hard to find, these, are these little inlet reservoirs for the pumps, and they can be kind of pricey. In fact, I think this thing cost me more than the pump did. But, you know, in the long run, it's worth it. It keeps the pump running for a long time, and I can move it to the, my next pump when I finally wear this one out. So it's a very worthwhile accessory to have. Okay, so let me get the vacuum filtering now. Normally, I put this pump down under the table where it's out of the way and it doesn't shake everything when it's running. But, you know, I'll start it up up here this time. This pump actually is pretty well balanced. It doesn't shake that bad. I've got it sitting on a piece of foam to actually absorb even more of the vibrations. So all my glassware in the fume hood isn't rattling. So that's nice. So uh, this is probably going to take a while, even with the vacuum. There's a lot of crud floating in this copper nitrate solution. So it's going to come through pretty quick to start with, but I can already see the filter is loading down with stuff. So 
filtering the rest of this uh, two liters of stuff is probably going to take the better part of an hour, I would imagine. It's going to start slowing down really bad here shortly. But still, it would take days, days, without the vacuum. So the vacuum really comes in handy. So that's why I do um, vacuum filtration. And, well, yeah, it's slowing down, but not as bad as I feared. So this may not take, you know, as long as I thought. Good, because I've got other stuff to do. I need this uh, as an electrolyte for my copper refining cell. So I just want to get the crud out of it. So anyway, there you go. Everything you ever wanted to know about vacuum filtration and vacuum pumps. Get a cheap one. You know, don't ruin an expensive one. There's, even if you don't... Even if you don't pull liquid through it, the gases that are coming off of this stuff, the hydrogen chloride, the, hydrogen, the, the, the sulfur dioxide, the, the nitrogen dioxide, they will eventually ruin a pump because they're going through it. So don't get an expensive pump. Get a cheap one. Okay. So I hope that helped answer any and all questions you had about my vacuum filtration technique. I hope you found this useful, informative, educational, inspirational. If so, give the video a thumbs up, give it a like, and subscribe to see all my future videos. They're coming out fast and furious. Press that little bell icon that YouTube makes you press to be notified when new videos come out. And thanks for watching. Have a good day. Happy scrapping.